Apple like got the tone of this film immediately. They immediately were excited by the fact that it was an original concept um, that didn't wasn't based on like pre-existing IP, and that which has become like you know sort of the norm, unfortunately, for most studios. And Apple just was not afraid of that. They were not afraid of making something original that you had to educate the audience about. Um, they, you know, I think for them it was, it fit very much into what Apple is all about. It's gorgeous and it looks so beautiful on the big screen and I think it's, it, it's one of those sort of summer films that feels like a, you know, it's a perfect like date night film, it's great for families, it, it sort of satisfies a lot of desire and, um, you know, I hope people see it as sort of a welcome yeah, a welcome, like, original concept in the theater this summer. Uh, first, it was Scarlett, I think. I've always always wanted to work with her. Um, and then Greg. Greg was actually, like, a really... I've always, like... Look at this beautiful man right here. <laughs> I was just talking about you. <laughs> I've always heard about him through you know, mutual friends, and he's just... He's such a giant in the industry and in his own right, and to know that he was kind of coming over and really going to be able to direct again and, like really do it on a really big scale. So I'd say those two. And then the story in itself was so written in a way that we don't get to see these movies very much anymore, where it's just, it is like a, it don't make romantic comedies all that much, but especially on this scale, and like that it's a romantic comedy inside of a giant event that we know of in history and like inserting this small little love story inside of this like thing that you think you know. It's uh, special in my opinion. And the, you know, the quippy dialogue and then also just the fun of the movie, I, I think it, it's really not just for like you know a date night or whatever. It's a, it's a full family movie. The movie's beautiful and it's giant and like you know it's one of those things that you could just you could go you know you could go either one. You really can. I have a really nice big TV in my in my house, so like it'll it'll be just as beautiful on there. And you know I don't know. I, I love watching. I think it's we're in a really interesting time in how we're digesting movies, and I think everybody's still got to kind of figure it out for themselves of like what what do they want to see where and and so on. I play Lance Vespertine, who is um, a uh, very difficult to work with commercial director or stuck in the commercial world as far as he's concerned, uh, that Scarlett Johansson's character uh, brings on to help with this uh, moon landing. And, uh, and yeah, I, you know, I, I only came to it in the sense that I got an email, there was an audition, and I was like, I hope I can get it. And so it was like a few rounds of that with Greg and then with Scarlett for chemistry. So I'm very lucky and grateful. I like to say I'm just channeling Greg Berlanti, as if that's who he is, but he's not. Uh, no, but I think we all know these type of people <laughs> that we can take in small doses, so I just sort of pulled from that. No, no directors I would even want to speak of. Lovely in both ways, to have a theatrical release and then to fall onto Apple TV is sort of like the best of both worlds. Um, to, to hopefully get people into the theater mainly to enjoy it uh, with strangers, which I think is the most infectious way to watch a movie. But then also to know that uh, come whenever it's on Apple TV to revisit and, and new eyes will find it, that they miss it in the theater. It was the most insane experience of my life, both booking it and then shooting it. We did five months and it was... It was in Atlanta, which is now one of my favorite cities, and it was so fun. It's a big budget movie, and working on it every day felt like truly so immersive, and yeah, it was great. I'm excited for audiences to see, again, big budget rom-coms, I feel like do not come around often, and I really think that this one like hits so hard. It is fun, it is charming, it's an ensemble movie, and it's, like, Jim is so funny in it like it, it's really a funny movie and it has heart and it's gorgeous um, so I think there's like every component you could want is in there so what's crazy is Ruby my character wears mini dresses every day and I'm like I'm in a I, I, I'm not used to that and so at first I was like no 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 please don't put me in these and then every day like once I got the hair done and the, and the dress on and we were on set I was like oh I'm in the 60s like there, there was a point where Scarlett and I were shooting a scene and they were playing the original audio recording from the moon landing and her and I we, we both looked at each other we had tears in our eyes after because we were like oh this that was the most real thing ever it felt like we were really there if I could take someone to space I'd take Scarlett I think we'd have a cute time up there it's just got so much style it looks beautiful I mean all the, you should have seen like the sets the wardrobe ever just like I could not believe like the length that all the departments went to to make this thing look the way it did um, so I'm just so proud and lucky to be in it. Well, we actually studied um, 
There's a lot of uh, footage of the astronauts and the way they dressed. Um, uh, Mary Zoffries, who did the wardrobe for this movie, I mean, there were, you know, hours and hours long sessions with her trying on different stuff. Um, I don't know, it was amazing. The fact that there's still a studio like Apple that would do an original story at this scale, uh, that already was a gift. And then the support we got, both technically, I think a lot of the spirit of a movie like this, which is about NASA, which is about all these really young engineers changing the world, I think it was is really similar to the spirit of Apple. And there was a lot of commonality, I think, in that. And we, we got all the best of everybody. I think the story is relevant now because, you know, first of all, I think people always want to watch an original story that's filled with heart and character and comedy and humor. But it's really about why the truth is important. Even though it's a fun time, and it's about one of the OG conspiracy theories, the audience in the end is sort of rooting for the truth to win out. And I think we're all rooting for that right now. If I had to name a space shuttle, I would name it after my mother, Barbara. She was a, a rocket in my life. She's no longer with us. She's in the heavens now, like a real rocket. And, uh, and she's a real inspiration for me. I think Neil Armstrong is the most famous astronaut in history, so he needs very little introduction. But I think something that we wanted to like highlight in this film, in talking with his family, was just to bring out his sense of humor. He's such a, a caregiver. He'll play down his own injuries, make sure everybody else is okay. He doesn't want to get credit for landing on the moon first. He just wants to talk about the 400,000 people who helped everybody get there. So, I mean, in terms of, of being honored to take on any historical real figure, Neil was at the top. It's hard to really fathom and take in the grandeur of that, but I think this is something that everybody has some kind of touchstone with. After they came back and crashed down, uh, they, they went on a world tour. So hopefully everybody can, I, I think with this movie particularly, it has a sense of romance, it has a sense of, of historical significance, it also has a sense of, of heart. You know, it meant so much to each of these people, including Channing and Scarlett's characters who have overcome personal tragedy and in order to come together and do something great, you know? So I really feel like the epic movie that is a non-superhero movie has been lost a little bit, and I think this movie delivers on all of that.